Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and this is my third take at filming this video, and I'm getting it right this time. We are going to do the War of the Visions weekly preview video. We're going to talk about Vega, the new unit coming out this week. He's coming with a new weapon, and we're going to look at the new Transcendence units in the global version of the game. You've got Ildira, you have powerful MRs, like Revelka's in there, one of my personal favorite 50 cost MRs. We're going to look at all of those, and we're going to start with Vega. Now, Vega's a 100 cost lightning element unit dark warrior of the crystal so new unique job to him if you look at the tmr this is super weird it is a protect increased chance of applying berserk by 25 percent tmr it's an accessory with 10 defense 301 hp and this like look protect is really good Protected on TMR is really good, but it only has one use, and the Berserk up chance feels very specifically for Vega, who does have Berserk in his kit, or for some, like, King Mott cheese build in class match, where you, like, double quicken King Mott into the enemy team after he applies this buff and he goes for Berserk. Like, those teams are out there, and maybe that's where this TMR sees some use. Otherwise, Super niche, super niche. Now, his master ability, he's got the lightning group buff. Lightning attack 15 for himself. Lightning attack 15 is a very powerful master ability. And then acquired AP 30. I really like his master ability. His dream ability, if you take him to 140, you're going to get more HP, single target resist, and an upgrade to skill soul breaker. So he gets more damage and AP here. He gets tankier here. Interesting. He's a really strong unit, guys. Like, he's a really strong unit. I think something that a lot of people are going to talk about when they're looking at him is he's lightning element at a time when, well, anybody who plays water will tell you that water's not in the greatest spot it's ever been. You still see some water here and there, but lightning just feels a little bit harder to play because there's plenty of King Bradley out there, Queen Mashery, Oberon, those people, but not a lot of like counter element matchups to pick for them. Still, lightning does a lot of damage. This guy's going to fit into that mold. He brings a new support ability to the table. Very good. 24% attack, 12 defense, and 40 slash attack resist penetration. He's an axe using unit, so he is a slashing damage dealer with his main job so you'll need this penetration to amp up his damage after that he's not bringing a second support ability from his job so you will probably go with attack and defense pin right here this will give you 40 slash attack pin and 40 defense pin immediately enhancing his damage and making him hard to tank if you need jump plus one you have that option if you need move plus one or more agility you have that option and you're probably not running dragon knight knowledge now counter move he has a very very cool counter move i'll take it away this gets upgraded to an 80 percent chance to counter attack for 165 percent damage and absorb 30 percent of the damage done it's a 100 percent hit chance move and it has range four this is like no joke one of the best moves in this guy's kit an 80 percent counter attack that hits for large damage it's colorless, so it cannot be tanked by elemental resistance, and it absorbs 30% of the damage done in a sure hit. Like, this is insane. This counter move is crazy. It's crazy. So run that all the time. It's actually better than Reflex. I think it's actually better than Reflex. Like, he's going to go in there, and if he's surviving hits, he's going to be draining HP back. I love it. I love it. So that's really a cool thing that he's going to do. Now, his main job kit, his cheap move, the 15 AP one, medium range, a paralyzed move, 121% modifier. That's fine. It's nice to have a cheap move, and paralyze is annoying to deal with. He has a wall of resentment, which is a physical damage barrier, and it is a 70% physical damage barrier for three times. So even if you're not fighting water teams with this guy, if you can find mono physical teams, which there are several dark teams that are very like that, there's some earth teams that are heavy physical you can run wall of resentment and force the enemy to at least be using barrier break moves on you a 70 percent wall is a big deal okay strike of grudge which upgrades to strike of evil this is a defense debuff for a single target again we're sitting at like medium to long range at range four 200% modifier. It is a guaranteed hit move plus increased modifier by 37% for each time you receive damage up to 75%. Now, 75% is 37.5 times 2. So, this is basically... Uh, if he's been hit twice, you're looking at a 275% modifier attack right here with a defense debuff attached to it. This will hit really, really hard. 
and you can see what the theme of this guy is. Go in there, be hard to kill, fight physical units, let them hit you a few times, that's ramping up your damage, and then start popping off for max damage hits. Okay, Extinction. This will give him more slash attack resist penetration, is an AoE move option for him that hits in a square AoE, does nice damage, and decreases CT for the targets. He has a group buff, Resentment from Hell, Strike Attack, or Strike Resist up, Magic Resist up, and Revive for himself. Or excuse me, re-raise for himself. So you'll want to get this cast to get him that auto revive. Now, again, yes, there are units in the game that can remove re-raise from you. And there are units in the game that can break barriers. Forcing them to do both is a good thing. Make Sephiroth pick what he's going to do to you. Make any unit that you're fighting do one or the other. Force their hand. Stop them from doing maybe a big AoE that wipes your whole group depending on who you're fighting. Okay, now Soul Killing. Speaking of dispelling auto revives, he has a move that does that for himself. Once again, it is a guaranteed hit, 100% hit chance move, 200% modifier, good range, and AoE on that thing. So that's another very powerful move. Okay, there's his main job. If you're running his sub job, you do have access to a agility debuff right here, but you're probably not going to be using that all the time. And then a TP move, Jealousy, where he increases his max HP by 40%. Yeah, I mean, like, this upgrade your skill, I'll take it away, which is this right here. So, if you are wanting to build him as that counterattack build, you must go this. This is the one. You'll get this buff online, and now you have this. Is this one of the first units in the game that almost mandates using their main job sub job? Maybe it is. It's really unique. That's a really cool thing. I'm down for it. Let's say you don't want to go that route, though. Let's say you want to go for Boxer to get access to your striking damage. Well, okay, you do get access to striking damage here with an attack a spirit buff for yourself, so that's fine. You also do have a courage buff here as well. So if you go Boxer, you can have re-raise uh, from, you know, up there somewhere and courage. So that's nice. All right, and then you have Dragoon. If you want piercing damage, you do get access to a uh, horizontal jump, which is one of Dragoon's most important moves because of the range on that thing which is really good so that's good and then your limit break is that triangle shaped aoe that they showed in the preview dispels buffs dispels haste dispels barriers 200 percent modifier and then there's the berserk so a lot of different ways to play this guy is he a mostly like he's a big damage 100 cost unit but you can build him as a counter attacker you can build him as a berserker taking advantage of his tmr you can build him as like a zaz on the unkillable bruiser build where he has re-raise and courage lots of ways to play this guy i think he'll be very powerful and scary if you see him in pvp he also comes with this axe which will really really help his damage because yes the assault version at 164 is a little low but it has 30 lightning attack on it and 15 slash attack up the the two-headed weapons or any weapon in the game really that's the elemental attack 30 with the um attack type 15 tend to be about the strongest there are so that's a really really powerful thing now let's move on to the second half of the video where we talk about the 140s first off we've got rob horde now here's what rob is on global let's see what the uh, dream enhancement gives him he's gonna get initial ap 20 evasion 10 and upgrade to the skill dedication and uniqueness if we go look at dedication and uniqueness so it's actually called devotion it's in his samurai sub job and it is a attack defense penetration buff previously like the regular devotion the samurai buff is a single target attack critical hit rate buff with this all the way upgraded into single minded you get attack you get 40 defense pin you get 15 critical hit rate and crucially for rob you get ignore sure hit for three times for yourself so you can see what they're trying to do to him right here they're trying to make rob um some kind of light evasion able unit right light has Locke, who just got 140 light has elena light is so good at evasion already giving rob more evade with the dream enhancement and giving him access to a buff that will ignore sure hit does maybe put him on a tier where he's usable i mean everybody's building rob anyway for glinting armor maybe you take this dude to 140 if you want to play light evasion and throw in rob in there just for cool points heck i'd give you cool points for it Okay, next up is Ildira. Now, her dream enhancement is all about giving 
herself more resistance. And it took me a minute to figure this out. Like, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of words to read through on this, but let me just tell you, let me just explain it in simple terms. She is getting all attack resist 10%. So that will make her 10% more resistant to all attack types. She's getting more healing power and then the upgrade to skill height two and height three resist. Now, height two and height three resist is a group buff that she can cast. And you can see all of these words on the screen. Let me highlight what changes. Height to resist was a buff for allies that gave them 15% resist to strike, pierce, and missile and increased the effect by 20% You know, if they were height 2 or height 3. Now what it does is it adds these last three lines right here will sh where she will also get the 15% resist to those three things. So if you're fighting a strike, pierce, or missile team, you are giving yourself and your teammates this buff as long as you're hitting them within this AoE. You no longer have to be standing in the middle of the AoE for yourself to get it. Like, that's the best way I can read that. And so I think they're trying to make Eldira tankier here and give her more healing, which is a good thing. Eldira is a really fun unit. Arithmeticians in general are always usable in like PvE farming situations. She's a good spot healer. She has nice long range damage spells and she'll be able to support a little bit better with those upgrades. Okay. All right, next up is Garvel. So let's take a look at Garvel's Dream Enhancement. It's HP 15, Dark Attack 15, and Supernatural Magic Bullet getting the upgrade. So a little bit tankier, a little bit more damage. Garvel's already like a decent damage dealer who's always kind of specialized with his sure hit moves, right? AoE sure hit has never been a bad thing, even though there's units in the game right now that have sure hit evasion. There's still a use for that, and Garvel's still a good unit. More HP and more, more dark attack will help him out. And then his job level 25 skill, Supernatural Bullet, it gets upgraded. Uh, the upgrade is now it's a piercing move. So if you're shooting this at somebody all the way over here, it will now hit other people in the way. Lancers have a lot of moves that do this piercing thing as well. So not a bad upgrade for Garvel. I wish they would have done him a little bit better. There was a lot of times uh, in this game where Garvel was just like meta. He's definitely not going to be meta again there, but more HP, more damage and a little bit of an upgrade to one of his moves. Now, Salir. Salir is definitely a crowd favorite. She's a little hard to use because she's a 65 cost unit, so putting her into cost limited teams, she's essentially 70 cost. Like if you're building a cost limited team, the cost limit is never 205, it's 200 or 210. In both of those situations, she is essentially 70 cost. So 65 hurts her a little bit in my opinion, but she is strong. Let's see what she's getting for her dream enhancement. She's getting magic attack resist pin 20. Love that. Activation time down 200. Love that. And her destruction thunder jutsu is getting upgraded. So let's go check out destruction thunder jutsu. Now it, it, two targets, two targets. It's one of those moves where you, it's single target move, but hits an AOE. You can go one, two, and just shoot it twice and hit two different people. It still decreases single target resist by 30, still hits for 185% modifier damage, but it's now a, a like quasi AOE with that uh, two target selection. So a nice upgrade for our girl Salir. My issue with her still just remains that 65 cost feels hard to work in to team, two teams. She's essentially a cheap UR but not quite as powerful. There we go. That's her. Now, 50 cost units are on the flip side. They are very easy to work into your cost limited teams. And we've got Vistral to talk about. His dream enhancement is like this. He's getting Magic Evasion 20, Agility 10%, and Iron Needle Throw is getting an upgrade. So this is a guy who, like, I've never used. Like, I just, full disclosure, I've never used this dude, but he has a ton of evasion here in his Master Ability 2. Against Magic teams, he gets 20 more evade. That's 45 evasion. Walk Walking into a Magic spell before any gear, any, you know, espers trust masters anything that's a ton so maybe he has a niche there now his move that's getting upgraded iron needle throw let's go look at that iron needle throw is going to be right here it is a 200 percent modifier move previously it restored ct to himself it will now 
give single target resist debuff 25 for three turns to the target and restore twice or almost twice as much ct it goes from 250 to 400 so he's getting more agility which will make him faster and he has a way of restoring 400 ct this is a really neat kit just does anybody use vistral like is he out here running around in cost limited light teams there is rob for light evade and if we look at rob's cost rob's a cost 80 so maybe you go like Rob Vistral, you're at 130, and if it was like cost limit 230, you could then run Elena with them, and Elena could carry both of them to a win like Elena does. So that's Vistral. Now, on the flip side, you have Ravelka. Ravelka is a very good MR unit. Cost 50. Energis Kodadama White Mage. Very, very usable in fire cost limited teams. Her dream enhancement looks like this. She's getting 15 more missile resist. Very good for her. Human Killer 15 when attacking with magic attacks. Awesome. That's big damage. And then Curse Barrage is getting upgraded. So let's go check out Curse Barrage right here. Um, it's going to be this one right here. So this is her job level 25 move. Dispels all buffs for target. Dispels haste for target. Um, dispels damage increases for target. It now does 200% modifier instead of 165. So a nice upgrade to one of her hardest hitting moves it's unfortunately not her aoe 100 hit move like that garvel runs still this will hit very very hard and it is her dispelling move ravelka is super good guys i'm telling you that white mage sub makes her even better she has great backup damage if you're playing fire cost limited she kind of covers your evasion weakness if you're walking in there so i like her a lot okay hey if you stuck through this whole video which i'm recording live Thank you. It was uh, like, I never have to do like three takes on a War of the Visions video. I don't know. Today, maybe I, I don't know what's going on with my brain. Thanks for watching, everybody. The edited YouTube version will be better. So if you enjoyed that, just know there was some uh, outtakes in the middle. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. I'll catch you next time. Peace.